Bacteria that can create poisons are often called pathogens. These by far are the biggest potential danger to human health from food by nature of the speed with which they can grow and multiply and it's right that we should take some time to gain a deeper understanding of how such bacteria work. The world about us is covered in bacteria of many forms and most in their proper place perform a useful job in our lives. For example, bacteria in our ears and nose help to break down more dangerous foreign matter and they do a wonderful job in doing so. But, if transferred by hand or a simple sneeze onto clean food and then allowed to grow, the poisons created can soon render the food dangerous for human consumption. So let us ask ourselves, in the workplace, how do we identify the presence of bacteria? What do they look like? What do they smell like? It's commonly thought that food is left out of changing colour or having a discernible rancid smell is a sign of bacteria at work and so if it smells and looks okay then it's fit to serve. Wrong. Food poisonous bacteria are colourless and odourless. Food poisoning bacteria cannot be detected by the human eye or nose. What you are seeing and smelling is the effect of spoilage enzymes which naturally break down edible matter over a period of time but do not in themselves render the food poisonous. For example, game birds like pheasant are often hung for a period of time to allow spoilage enzymes to soften the meat and enrich the taste. So note, the change in colour and smell of food shows no indication of the presence of harmful bacteria. However, foods showing these characteristics brought about by spoilage enzymes should be treated with some suspicion as the period taken for the enzymes to work could imply a similar time for bacterial growth. The reason we can't see or smell food bacteria is that they are so minute that thousands of bacteria could be sat upon a single pinhead. Most bacteria, however, can be seen under a microscope and their presence, type and growth rate identified under laboratory conditions. It is important to understand that not all bacteria are harmful to food. In fact, some products, such as yogurts and some cheeses, need certain safe forms of bacteria to achieve their distinctive taste and texture. The danger from pathogenic forms of bacteria comes as a byproduct of poisons, often called toxins. Toxins are emitted as the bacteria grow, split, reform and so multiply and so they continue to produce ever more toxins making it harmful to human digestive system until after ingestion the human body tries to reject the poisons in the form of vomiting, diarrhea or in more severe cases where the poison can't be fully cleared the symptoms may escalate to sickness, fever, dizziness and even death. So in a world where bacteria are all about us our target in the food industry is to stop them growing and multiplying. So what makes bacteria grow? In order to grow and multiply, the needs of bacteria are very similar to those of human babies in that they need food, moisture, air and warmth. Food, air and moisture are very hard to remove in the kitchen environment which leaves us with temperature, for which we have devised many useful tools over the years, and so the control of temperature has become the primary method of control of bacterial growth in the food industry. Bacteria, again like human babies, have a band range of temperatures within which they can grow and flourish. Too cold, below 8 degrees Celsius, and they effectively go to sleep. Too hot, above 63 degrees Celsius, and most bacteria are killed or protect themselves by forming a hard shell and becoming what are called spores, in which state they cannot grow and multiply.